Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Howard from Jackson Independent Schools and today I'm going to be talking about my experience implementing the Modern Classrooms Project in my third grade classroom. The Modern Classrooms Project was offered um, as a virtual learning institute by KVEC, um, which they partnered, partnered with Modern Classrooms Project. And during this institute, um, teachers like myself learned how to create self-paced mastery-based lessons to redesign their lesson planning in their classroom. So I'm gonna be talking about my experience with it today. So first thing I wanna talk about is the problem of practice that I considered when I applied to be part of, part of the project. So when I was planning for the 2021-2022 school year, it was clear to me that this was not going to be a normal year of school. Students would be returning to in-person full-time, but there was going to be class quarantines if needed, and there was going to be a very large need for flexibility for sick days while we continued to grapple with the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I knew that there was going to be lots of student absences if there was going to be an outbreak of the, the virus, things like that. So I knew that that's something that I needed to address. I also knew that students need to be able to stay on task whether they're in class or at home and that they needed a way to be able to access this learning anytime they need. So we've always used a learning management system, but um, there's a lot of times where the organization of that doesn't really fit the flow of the lesson when it's all on one stream or um, all in their classwork on Google Classroom, for example. So I knew that I needed to find a way to where I could put all of my units that they need to be keeping up with all in one place so that they could easily see what they needed to do, what they've already had done, things like that. I also knew that students in the classroom should not have to wait for others to catch up before moving on to the next lesson. I had some students who are farther along in some subjects or some units than others. Um, some may be really, really um, farther ahead in rounding, but they may be a little bit farther behind when it comes to um, the applications of addition and subtraction, things like that. So students who understand something really well and they don't need a whole lot of practice in it, they shouldn't have to wait for others who do to move on to the next lesson. So I knew that a blended learning approach would address most of these issues for now and for the years ahead. So that's what pushed me to apply for um, the experience for participating in the Modern Classrooms Project. So um, the next question that I wanna answer is what is the Modern Classrooms Project? So the Modern Classrooms Project is an initiative to provide teachers with the tools they need to redesign their instruction. So um, there is a big goal of the Modern Classroom Project to give teachers the tools they need to create, instructional, to create an instructional model that supports building blended self-paced mastery-based learning. So the project um, encourages teachers to use technology effectively in order to improve their teaching and to help increase student understanding. And they do this by effectively replacing live direct instruction where you're given a lecture in class and you're replacing it with high quality video lectures that you create. And then the students are able to move through the course at their own pace. This is where that self-paced learning comes in. The teacher is a facilitator and every student is met where they need to be met. So that's what the modern classroom is, but let's talk about the instructional model. So the instructional model has three main parts. There is blended instruction. This is where the students access content from their teacher. The teacher has created the videos and uploaded them to one um, common site or common place. Um, the second part is a self-paced structure. So the students learn at their own pace within the unit of study. So um, the teacher will open up one unit and then the teacher, the students can move through that unit at their own pace. Um, that gives you a lot more time to work on the work on um, the foundational needs that some students need while others are able to go ahead and continue on if they don't need as much foundational help. And then the third part is mastery based grading. So students progress when they demonstrate ma mastery. So if they um, get through the lesson and they are able to demonstrate that they have achieved mastery through a check then they're allowed to move on to the next lesson. If not, they have to go back and we reteach. They have to go back to the student, to the teacher created video, um, go back through the practice until they reach mastery and then they're allowed to move on. So that's what the instructional model looks like. So the model in my third grade classroom looked like a little bit like this. So I applied the modern classrooms model in my unit one of my mathematics instruction for my third grade class. So during the project, they ask you to just focus on 
one unit um, so that it made it a little bit easier to see how the process worked. So I focused on unit one of math. For me um, in third grade, that was rounding um, numbers to the nearest 10 and to the nearest hundreds. So the project provided when you applied for the project and you received the grant, you got an iPad, an Apple Pencil, and access to the Explain Everything app to support development of the unit. So I use these tools to create lots of slideshows of my lessons, explain everything, the app, um, let me record the slides with the voiceover or my webcam showing. I could write on the slides to give several examples of the problems that students will be working on, which was really, really helpful. Um, and it recorded me as I was doing it. So it recorded everything that I wrote on my screen. And then it saved that video on the iPad, which you could upload straight to YouTube right there, which is an easy, accessible um, website that, that students can get on at any time. Um, if you didn't feel comfortable using YouTube, you could always upload it to Screencastify or as a Google, um, as into your Google Drive and then share the link, whichever one works best for you and your students. So once I had the lessons created for the entire unit, I was able to add them to a Google Sites web page, which turned out to be the easiest thing for me. So um, in my district, we have to set up a um, website that students can uh, can access and we're, we're instructed to teach them how to use it. So that's where I uploaded my um, Modern Classrooms unit. And then during our math blog, students would go to that web page to journey through the unit at their own pace. They could look at the instructional video as many times as they needed. They could pause the video while they were working to complete the assignment. And they always had more assignments to be working on when they got done. So nobody ever had free time or anything like that, which was really nice. And that really gave me the time to work with students who really needed that extra support while the other ones still got instruction from me um, by going through the other lessons. Okay, so a big part of the um, model that you do when you're creating your lessons is you come up with activities that they call must do's, should do's, and as aspire to do. So as part of the self-paced part of the model, each unit has tasks that help students stay on task while allowing others to continue to be challenged with the content. So must do assignments are assignments that every student has to complete. So in my unit, this included guided notes, so every time we had an instructional video, there was notes that went along with it that as the students, that while the students watched the video, they had to fill out the guided notes, which at the end of that, they had a full set of notes that they could go back and refer to when they were doing the lesson. Um, after they completed the instructional video and the guided notes, everybody has to do the, les the lesson practice sheet, which was usually five to 10 questions just to see how they applied. And, um, at the end of that, I would usually let two, two students group up together and kind of check each other's work, let them talk about what they did wrong, um, let them figure out some of the things that they could do better next time, um, things like that. A lot of things that they like to share is how they did it differently, how they found the answers in a different way. So they really enjoyed doing that part. And then the last part of the must do's that everybody has to do is after they've completed the guided notes and the instructional video, the lesson practice, and they've talked to a partner about it, then they complete a mastery check. So this is just a very short assessment to show if the student has reached, reached mastery. Sometimes it may just be um, one question where they have to write a full sentence. Sometimes it might be five, five questions to show mastery. It's just a really short, quick checkout to see if they've got it. So it must be completed and checked by the teacher before they can even move on to the next lesson. The other part of the self-paced model is should do assignments. These are assignments that students should work on before trying to take the mastery check. These activities in my classroom usually consisted of our online learning program. We use a program called Exact Path, which is tailored to their learning. Um, and then I can assign my own assignments. So when we were working on rounding, for example, I put everybody's assignment as the rounding lesson with the uh, practice. So, um, it really aligned to the content that we were working on. So anytime a student was waiting for me to check a mastery check, or if they got finished with their partner going over their lesson practice, they could be working on a should do assignment. This was our online learning program that they were working on to get extra practice. And then the last part of the self-paced um, part of the model was the aspire to do. Now these were extension activities that students can work on after they've completed all the other components of the lesson, even after they've reached mastery. If they're just not, maybe it's um, the last little bit before class and they don't wanna start on a new instructional video just yet, 
they can go ahead and do the Aspire to do. And I usually gave bonus points for this. So that was a big motivator to my students. Um, if I didn't give bonus points, I always had like a prize they could get if they um, completed and uh, got everything right on the Aspire to do's. So some examples of what I did in the Aspire to do's was some real world applications. One example that I'm gonna show later on in this presentation is a, um, an ad from a grocery store in which students had to uh, take the prices of produce and round them to the nearest 10. And then some STEM based challenges where um, some students, um, they worked on building a virtual world in which they had to use um, rounding to the nearest 10 and the nearest 100 in order to, uh, they could build that into their world. Um, so that is some STEM based challenges that we had available in our unit one um, lessons. Okay, so here's another part of that self-based learning. So on my website, I use an assignment game board that students could use to track their own progress in the unit. The game board is color coded based on must do, should do, and aspire to do activities. It has a starting spot and a finish spot so that students can easily see where they are in their learning progress. So if you notice um, down here, we have our starting spot and then every lesson is labeled. So they know lesson one and it gives the standard, what, a ten, what tens a two digit number falls between and the guided notes. Then they have lesson practice one and then they have the mastery check. I always give two examples of a mastery check so that I don't have students um, trying to share answers, things like that. So everyone is assigned a letter for um, that lesson. So uh, some people who usually are partners may get A or B. So that's why I have two different ones. The should do's are in blue. So here's our exact path practice and it gives them the name of the lesson so that they know exactly which one they're supposed to click on. And then the aspire to do is in purple. So when they get done with all of this, if they're not ready to move on to lesson two yet, they can always work on the store ad for some bonus points or a prize. So that's what that looks like. And when they get all done, it repeats the standard in a student friendly language, letting them know that they have mastered rounding two digit and three digit numbers to the nearest 10. So that's what that assignment board looks like. And that's posted at the top of the unit page on my website. Okay, so here's the web page setup. This is how I organize it. And the students said that they found this to be really helpful because again, it was color coded. So my modern classroom unit was posted on my regular class web page, which students were taught to navigate to on the first day of school. The unit page was color coded just like the game board map with must do activities listed in green, should do in blue and aspire to do in purple. And then each lesson had a dark header to show that it was the beginning of a new lesson. And then there are two mastery checks to prevent students sharing answers. They are assigned one mastery check per lesson. Okay, so here's some examples of what it would look like. Um, so first the students would watch the video instructions. So this was a video that I recorded using explain everything and then uploaded to YouTube. So it was just a rounding lesson number one and I was able to write on this screen and give examples and show a video of me doing it, things like that. So these are all examples of my must do assignments, the ones that kids, the students had to do. Number two, they had to complete the guided notes while, we, while they watched the lesson. And so if you look here, as I'm going through this uh, video, it has the same exact screen and I fill in the blanks. So they're just filling in the blanks as I do it as well. So that's what the guided notes look like. And then when they got done with that, they had to complete the practice page. So this one just had um, four or five questions about labeling um, a number on a, showing the numbers that the two tens that a number falls between. And then finally the mastery check. Um, this is what I was talking about. It's a very short check. Like this one just had one word um, problem in which the student had to apply the knowledge that they learned in this first lesson in order to show their mastery. So here's some examples of should do. Um, should do assignments was always on our um, online learning program, which was tailored to what the content that we're doing in class. So they would go onto this website, which was easily accessible to them because it was posted on my website. Um, and they would go ahead and start that lesson and go through it on their own pace. And then they would complete the quiz at the end. And then we have an example of our Aspire to do assignments. So our Aspire to do assignments consisted of extension activities that students could work on when they completed all others. So this is what I talked about before. This was one of the um, extensions that I gave. Um, it was just a store ad in which students had to take the price of produce and round it to the nearest 10. They really enjoyed this 
um, just being able to see a store ad and seeing how to apply to their real life. Here's some examples of my students going through um, the lesson. At the moment in all these pictures, they're working on an Aspire to Do project. So they have completed and mastered um, all of lesson one. So in this lesson, um, at the end of it, they were able to create a virtual world. And in this virtual world, they were able to um, set up questions where they could ask each other questions and the other kids could come along and they could answer them. So they really enjoyed doing that and it helped them apply their learning in the master, from the mastery check. So the results of the project. So as a result of implementing this project in my classroom, many of my students found success with it. They really enjoyed the game board structure to keep track of their learning. Um, according to a survey that I gave at the end of this lesson, students indicated that they really enjoyed having lessons on video that they could go back and listen to again. Um, they said that really helped them because sometimes um, when I would give live lectures, they would forget the things I said, but being able to go back and the fact that I kept the video so short, um, I usually didn't let my videos go over three or four minutes. Um, that way they could just go back and look at it really quickly and then be refreshed on what I said. They really enjoyed that part. They also said that they liked that they didn't have to wait on everyone else to get done before they could move on. They said that was one area in the past that they had really gotten bored in class when they had to wait for everyone to move on, even if they were given like a task to read when everybody's finished or anything like that. They felt like it was a waste of their time to have to just sit around and wait instead of moving on to the next lesson just because other people hadn't finished yet. So they liked that part. My students also said that they liked that they had a choice in which activities they finished to show mastery. They understood that there were some less or some activities that everybody had to do and you didn't really have a choice in that because that's the stuff that I had to grade. But they said that they really enjoyed having the should do and the aspire to do because it didn't feel too overwhelming like they had all this stuff to get done, but they still had a choice on if they wanted to do it or not. Most of them did choose to go ahead and do the aspire to do activities for the prize or the bonus points. They liked that part too, obviously. And then um, it was a big help for me because some of my students did end up experiencing quarantines and sick, sick days, even at the beginning of the school year. And they all indicated that this project helped them stay on task. They came back and they felt like they were right where everybody else was because we were all working on the same unit, but at our own pace. Some students did have difficulty finishing the lessons during the time frames given. They had to complete the lessons at home or during special classes to stay on track. So this was a very small number of students, but I did notice that it was happening. So one way that, um, you know, I thought that we could work on this in the future is to talk about how it's important to stay on task, of course, but to the, this project allows you to work at your own pace, but that doesn't mean that um, you just get to slack off for most of it and then try and make it all up at one time. So uh, the students that experienced that after the first time that they did in the first lesson, it wasn't a problem anymore after that. So I think that they really um, got the gist of it after we got through the first lesson. So um, the last result of this project is that I'm currently building the rest of my math curriculum around aspects of this model. I really liked creating the videos for my students because like they said, it was really helpful for them to be able to go back. And instead of me repeating something over and over again, then I could refer them back to that video. Some students do require face-to-face -face, um, instruction and that's okay because the videos allowed me to share the lecture with the whole class and then come back and do extra instruction with the kids who really, really needed it. Um, so that was really helpful for me. So that's a part that I'm putting in. I'm keeping the game, the, the game board structure because I really like how that gives kids a visual um, a map of where they're supposed to be and where they are. They enjoyed that as well. Um, I'm also keeping um, putting the lessons or the units up on my webpage. The students really found that helpful. They really enjoyed that structure. And they said that even when they were at home and um, their parents were able to easily get to it as well to look at what they're supposed to be doing. So that worked out really well for me. Um, and then also having the should do, the must do and the aspire to do activities. I really enjoyed that as well. Um, I like that students had a choice. I like that um, at the end, they all chose just about, all of them chose to do um, the aspire to do activities. But even if they didn't, I still know that they're getting what they're supposed to be getting when they do the must do activities. So um, I really enjoyed the project. I think that it really helped my students 
especially during this trying time. But I will, I am pretty excited about continuing to use aspects of the project in my normal classroom. Um, 